Praise God. Praise God. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, we want us to start, and I'll ask Pastor Tom to uh, give us a, an opening prayer. Then we'll move from there. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before your throne of grace this afternoon, O oh God, as we have gathered here in the memory of your beloved sister, mother, friend, whatever she was to us, Lord, we want to commit this service into your hands, that as you continue, your name might be glorified, O oh God. May you bring comfort, may you bring peace to each and every last one of us, O oh God, that are here or represented here or watching from wherever they are. Oh God, we pray that by the power of your spirit, uh, you may lead us and guide us, Lord, into the paths of comfort uh, and grace and strength at such a time as this, oh God. In the name of Jesus, uh, now we pray that, Lord, as the service continues, may your name be glorified and may your spirit strengthen and encourage each and every last one. For all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Um, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I just want to thank God. Um, even welcome to you all uh, to this uh, service this ev evening at the House of Transformation uh, in memory of our beloved sister, uh, Mildred Mukanzi Kua, uh, who has left us and has rested. We want to continue with the program. As you well know that we are in a time where we have to be very conscious of protocols, including timekeeping, so we need to move quickly. We'll encourage each and every person who is going to speak to please be as brief as you can be, and uh, we'll continue by the grace of God until we are all done. So I want to, you to know that if you are here for the first time, we have our washrooms outside on my left and to your right. You can be able to exit if you need to take a break and come back. Otherwise, we are ready to proceed uh, with the arrangement uh, of the service, and we believe that God will encourage and strengthen us as we go along. So God bless you all. Um, I'll invite uh, Brother Kimakwa to come and continue. But before we do that, uh, we can have a time of uh, um, worshiping God briefly because our sister was a believer. She was born again and we want to make this also a celebration of a life that was well lived. So I want to ask you to um, just remember that we are worshiping God. We are thanking him for her life. And as we do that, we know that even encouragement and strength will be improved to us and uh, we'll be able to gain strength as we continue with the service. So God bless you all. I'll ask uh, our praise and worship team to lead us uh, in uh, a song and then we can continue from there. God bless you. Sound. 
we believe he's guiding us he's guiding us and he will show us the way that we should go Father God, even at this time, Lord, we just bring the family before you, Lord, in faith and trust, believing that, God, that you will give them peace and comfort. Father, you will stand with them, Lord. You will show them the way to go, Father. Your scriptures tell us, Father God, that you will guide our paths. That, Father God, even when we go through certain circumstances or through paths we've never been before, Father. You are right there, Father God, and you will strengthen. You will show the way. You will not forsake. Father God, you smoothen, Father God, the rough patches, Heavenly Father. You bring light, Heavenly Father God, even in dark situations. Father God, you are in control. God is in control of every situation, and we just rest in you completely, Jehovah Jireh. We thank you, Father God. Bless your name, Father God. Thank you, Father. He is in control of every situation. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name.
Praise God. May we take our seats. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, saints of God. Thank you, Pastor Tom, uh, for those remarks, opening remarks. Uh, it's very tough, especially for me, uh, to stand here uh, to do the MC work for my good friend. Uh, I'm with a very heavy heart, but we have to do it, and that's God's way. Um, I don't know where to start from, but we have to start from somewhere. Uh, we are now on tributes, and please, we want to kiss it, everything, just kiss it. Don't come here to give us, <laughs> I know she was born in the year 1969. So don't start there, because we will not leave this place. Uh, so I want to ask, uh, I know we may have to do things in a different way. Uh, I know we have the order here, but I think I will request uh, Pastor Ndimuli just to start us off uh, with the tribute. I know people are looking at the program and wondering why uh, Pastor Ndimuli, uh, but uh, he has a special message and I will want him maybe to be the one to, to open this uh, for us. Then from there, we will go to Sister Lunjalu and uh, Sister Kimiri, that order. Right? So, Pastor Ndimuli. Uh, praise the Lord, church. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Uh, it's good to see all of you today uh, during this service uh, that has been uh, prepared to appreciate God for the life lived by my dear friend, uh, Sister Mildred Mukansi Musavi Ikua. I don't know why Brother uh, Chris picked on me, but he told me that I'm supposed to be the one reading the tribute uh, from the husband, who is my very good friend, Dominic Ikua. I think that being the case, I would want first to introduce the team. Uh, do we have the brothers to uh, my brother Dominic is John here? Uh, we have been with John all through. Uh, where's John? Is John Ako? He's not. I saw a first cousin, the one whose mother and the mother to Dominic are sisters. I'm forgetting his name. I saw him. That one will not escape because we've been with him. I saw him. Where's he? Yes, yes, come, 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 come. It's been very close, I think. Uh, in fact, you should be the one to read the eulogy. <laughs> Come, but I will do it since they have given that to me. But it's good to see you. I think you can just say something on behalf of the family of Ndugu Dominic. Uh, the husband to the late is unwell. Uh, he is in the house, uh, but very vibrant. Uh, we have been with him after the late had passed on, he's very strong. We were at the mortuary with him. And they, at home, he is doing very well. Nothing to worry about. Just that um, uh, the current medical requirements are that uh, if you have any condition that could relate to COVID-19, then you have to isolate. So he is actually in his house very well. Very vibrant. Yesterday he did a very long walk, and he's a very, very vibrant person, very happy, rejoicing for what God gave him for the last 32 years. So we just want to hear from the family. On behalf of the family, you can say something. Do you have another mic? Okay, please. Okay, how about this? you? Komajina naito Robert Maina. Mimi ni first cousin Mr. Ikua. Uh, yangu nikuwa shukuru kwa kuja hapa sina maneno mengi Mungu akabariki amen okay. thank you sir thank you very much uh, is part of the uh, 
family team that has been very close to this family. Uh, you know that families, they are in Njabini, in Nyandarua County. Unfortunately, because of the haste with which this was done, because of the protocols again set by government, they have not been able to come. But it's a very strong family. They are mourning, and we appreciate God that they are standing so much with the children and the brother or the son, uh, Brother Dominic. I would want to read the tribute, but before that, uh, people might wonder, some of them, why I come into this. Uh, this is a very, very close family to my family. In fact, they became part of our family. We treat each other with Dominic as a brother. I told him he's my brother. These children, I have never called them by name. All of them, I know their names, but I call them my daughters. And, and Michelle there is my son. Uh, we have had some very good time with them. Uh, one of the daughters of Dominic Ikua is a part of my family. Uh, I would want to, to dispel any doubt as to that. Uh, whenever among the Kikuyus, um, Aluya and my son found a fiancé among the Kikuyus. And when we went to Njabini, there was something there, a ceremony that is a traditional ceremony. Uh, my son Emmanuel, stand Emmanuel. Emmanuel is my firstborn son. And when we went to Njabini, after every occasion, everything being done, he was told, now you have a wife. Anything else, this is your wife. So we already have a wife. We are only waiting for the motions of church and the blessing on that pulpit. Amen. Therefore, what I'm saying is the daughter of this family is a part of my family, and we have had very good time together as two families, bonding sessions where we sit until late night just for the families to become one. And the lady that is dead was full of life, very wonderful mother. She gave her all to her children. She loved her husband so much. Whenever she sat together, myself and Sister Indimuli and her, and the husband, that is Mildred and Dominic, they would do things that would make me feel, wow, we're still young. Eh? They were so close. They loved each other so much. And so allow me to read the tribute that was prepared yesterday by Ndugu Dominic Ikua for, her, for, for his dear wife. And I read, Mildred Musavi, my wife, was not only the mother of my kids, but also my best friend. Finding a partner who doubles up as your friend has got to be an achievement. She was also my confidant. When we were young and in love, having come from different communities, she taught me that true love knows no tribe or color. She promised to be on my side always, and that's exactly what she did till her last breath. She was an amazing mom to my children by ensuring they got everything they needed, even if it meant denying herself. The gap that she has left cannot be filled even if I was given a lifetime. I'm honored to have spent 32 years by her side. You will forever remain in my heart till we meet again. I know you're now watching over us. Thank you so much. So God richly bless you, saints of God, for coming in when Dominic is not here to stand in the gap. God richly bless you. Thank you. Praise God. I thought we agreed, Sister Lujan, Sister Kimiri, so that we kill time. Afternoon, church. Praise the Lord. My name is Pamela Lunjalu. Um, I would first wish to convey my condolences to the family of our late sister Mildred. Um, my first encounter with the late Mildred was in a boardroom when we had an interview for. Uh, Gaka head teacher. 
and the first impression that uh, Mildred presented was of a great teacher. She was well prepared for the interview. She was very knowledgeable in matters academic and matters education. She had her professional papers in order. Very well organized teacher. And so we went through the interview and all the panelists agreed that this is the person to pick to head uh, Gaka as the head teacher. The parents who are here and the teachers and the pupils, you will agree with me that she was not a disappointment. She did her best and we thank God for the service that she gave to our school. Mildred was a friend to me, not just in the school, a personal friend and a friend in the teaching profession. Despite the fact that she was very knowledgeable in her area of expertise, she would always consult. She consulted um, those of us who are in the education uh, system, we are aware that there are matters that are emerging that the things you learned in college may not be the same things that are on the ground. And so she would consult a lot. She consulted on the day-to-day -day matters of running the school. She consulted on the kind of meals that the pupils needed to eat. She consulted on interpersonal relationships with the teachers, with the members of the board, and even with the parents. A great teacher. Never shied away from learning from any source that would give her information to become a better teacher every day. Very well organized. Any time we held the school board meetings, the members of the board, you will agree with me, we went to the boardroom and we found our files updated, minutes updated. All the information required was according to what was expected of her. A very well organized teacher. And I thank God for having given me an opportunity to serve with Mildred as a member of the board in Gaka. She was a great friend to me. We talked a lot. I remember the last Sunday we talked, the last Sunday before she was hospitalized, we stood out there and we exchanged some notes in matters marriage of our children. A very loving mother who cares for her children, Cecilia. Your mother cares for you and cared for you. She was very interested to find out whether the daughter had gone through the premarital counseling sessions and whether she was making progress. I want to thank God for this church and I want to thank God for the pastoral team and I want to thank God for the church leadership. That because of that, the program Cecilia went through and we can stand here with confidence to say that she went through the session successfully. And your mother was keen to know that you were well prepa prepared during these sessions. A great mother indeed. Last but not least, to the children. God is in control 
of every situation, he will make a way. May Mildred's soul rest in peace. Thank you. Um, this is my tribute for Teacher Mildred. Um, Teacher Mildred was a colleague, a colleague here in church. The church was our platform. The dining was our platform, the, the courtyard. We would just go around and talk and talk and talk endlessly. So as Chris was saying, he doesn't know where to start. She was very close to me. So I'll begin by saying she was a colleague and much more a dear friend. She was a wise, wise woman, very responsible in her dealings with people around her. For the period I have known her, I came to learn that she was a very spiritual and deeply connected with God. And being added to the church, she very easily identified with the truth. She was evident, it was evident when we would share the word of God, for she would radiate with joy that could not be hidden. She loved her spiritual father, the bishop and Sister TV. And I'm so happy to see you, Sister TV, a day like today. It would not have been complete. She would always inquire on steps to take or decisions pertaining to the school. I work where I would refer her to Bishop, where is he now, and all that. And she would give progress reports. She showed commitment and diligence, raising the school to a very high standard. She shared her vision which was to make the school succeed. We will remember Mildred as a strong pillar. And sadly to say, known unto God are all his works from the foundation of the world. It is time for you, Mildred, to rest, to rest from your labors, free from pain. I was reading the scriptures in Job chapter 14, verse 13, and I will say it says, Oh, that thou would hide me in the grave, that you would keep me secret until the wrath be past, and remember me in the appointed time. And I believe this appointed time is a time of resurrection. Now say fear thee well, Mildred, and may the Lord, good Lord, comfort the boy and the girls. Amen. Uh, you know, Sister Mildred was actually uh, in my cell group. Now you can see why it's heavy on me also. So I can't talk on behalf of the cell group, but I'll ask Pastor Wasike, uh, who's also a member in our cell group, just to mourn our beloved sister. Sister Tivi, karibu sana. You know, we are happy to see you around. Praise God. That's the language Mildred would love hearing and repeating. And praise God. Um, MC, it's very hard for me to know where to begin, as everybody has said, because if I were to talk about Mildred, I would take a very long time. As Sister Lunjal said, we were together in the board when uh, we were interviewing Mildred. I don't want to repeat that because it was already said. But um, I can only say, before I talk about the cell group, that I worked with her 
in the education, the school. And for the period we worked together, she was a diligent lady. She knew her job. I never doubted her on anything. And every time she asked for anything, she was only asking to confirm on the decision she has taken. And that's the kind of person we are talking about. Now, as a cell group, uh, <coughs> Garden Estate B cell group, and uh, uh, Pastor Chris, Kimakwa, we call him pastor in our cell group. I don't know elsewhere, but in our cell group is Pastor Chris. Uh, he, he leads us very well. He does a good job. But I want to say Mildred was a very strong member of that cell group. We will miss her contributions anytime we had issues in the cell group. Very wise words that she could give us in the cell group. I know cell group members will miss her uh, dearly at this time. But um, what I can say, maybe if you can post for me a scripture there in Isaiah 57, in Isaiah 57, and I will look at verse 1. This is what I want to say about Mildred as a cell group member that we had in our cell group. The Bible says, the righteous perish, and no man laid it to heart. And the merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. Mildred has just rested and has been taken away from the evil to come. I believe that she was ready. God prepared her for the time. And when it was ready, God chose to take her away. And uh, all we can say is we pray for you, family, that you remain strong even at this time of sorrow. May God bless you. Praise God. I think we are moving so well, but uh, I have a problem with uh, teachers. You now, when you tell a teacher to speak for one minute, it will turn out to be a whole lesson. Uh, you know, <laughs> so I think I'm trying to go, I'm going to avoid now teachers uh, coming here to speak, but I want to go to uh, friends of uh, Mildred, Aikua, and uh, do we have Wairedi here? Wairedi? Huh? Is she here? Okay, so we have, uh, sometimes when you are an MC here and you, you are told to call your wife, I don't know how you call her, but I'll call uh, Kezia to come and maybe give her tribute. Uh, you know, you feel like skipping that, uh, but it's there on the program, so you can't skip it. Well, it's very heavy for me, India, and more my friend. We used to call each other women of faith. And because many times Bishop would preach a message here, we'll go somewhere and sit and talk about the message and we'll analyze the message and come up with more scriptures concerning the message. And at times we come up with our own message. The following service, Bishop will preach and quote exactly the message that we have been sharing with Mildred. So to me, my friend, it's very hard to mourn her. I remember when she came and joined the school that six years ago, Mildred became my best friend. One time she told me, Kezia, I like the way you do things in this place. I love the order in your church. And that time she was fellowshipping with the uh, living water. She told me, I love your church. I love the way you do things. And I, would, how do, I don't know how to, to get to know more of these things that you people, the order that you have. And I told her, my friend, 
the best way for you to know is come visit him. Come, you'll be able to know, you'll be able to understand how we do things here. And she told me one time that take me to my bishop and I want to, as I talk to, to him, I want to tell him that I'm found, I found a new place that I'm joining. And I remember I told her, before you do that, talk to Bishop Rutivi and explain, make sure that your heart is at peace before you make any decision, changing church from one church to the other. And Mildred booked, her, booked an appointment with Bishop. She came and talked to Bishop, and Bishop told her, as your spirit leads you, you follow your heart. And I took her to the living water, and she met the Bishop of that place, and they talked. And that's the reason why she felt like it was important for her to move is because her family now had, had fallen in love with this place. Her husband had now chosen to be part of this fellowship. And she said, I cannot be going there and my family is going somewhere else. So it was wise for her to come and join the, friend, the, the family. Six years has been a journey and a good journey with my friend. I stand here because Mildred trusted me with her children. She told me everything concerning every child in that house. She opened up so many things. I can tell every child and her personality. I look at Wanja. I look at Winnie, Maureen, and Randy, and every child to them, to me, they have become part of my life. I just tell the girls, we have so many mothers in this church that are willing to be your mother. Randy, you've become my son, and I want to encourage you children. I know what you're going through right now. The kind of questions you're asking me yesterday morning, I may not be able to answer them right now, but I believe the God in heaven knows I told you yesterday the fact that God who took away your mother understands better. And in such kind of a situation, it's very difficult even to encourage. I've been trying to put on a face, a face inside, but inside, on top, but inside I've been crashing. And I'm telling God, this is a heavy load. How do we run from here? I was the last person with Mildred before she died. When the doctor called us, me and her daughter were, were the contact people. And they told us, Mildred, you, you have to come and see. Things don't look so well. And I went and picked her daughter. We went to the hospital and the doctor said, I want to allow you to go in and meet with your patient. And I told my Mwanja, my daughter, I told her, it doesn't matter how weak you are, we have to get inside there. Thank God for Manuel, he has been very close to her. We got into the ICU. The first thing, Mildred looked at us and asked if Bishop is praying for her. And I told her, Mildred, Bishop is really praying and the church, they're all praying for you. And she cried. But we could tell that Mildred was struggling. She was struggling breathing. Her oxygen level had really gone down. She kept saying that Kezia people are dying here, but I want to leave. And I told her, good is the will of the Lord. We are so grateful that God gave us time with Mildred. I can never say thank you enough to God for the much that I've known this lady. And for real, she loved God's work. She loved God's children. I look at the school and I wonder. She has impacted a lot of knowledge on teachers and they can bear me witness. Much as Mildred was my friend, when it came to duty, she did not take me as a friend. She rebuked me. She corrected me. And we took the correction so positively because I knew she was helping me. I knew she's doing this to help me advance. So for real, I've lost a very good friend. I've lost a comrade. And I've been telling the girls we are in this together. So I'll just read something I had written for my friend. It's such a sorrowful day for me to mourn my friend so close, a confident, a mentor whom I looked up to along my career life, a mother to many. You are not just a boss to me, but a colleague whom I approached so easily. Your leadership skills were excellent. I consulted you on so many things regarding our children in school, and you offered advices without any hesitation. Mildred, it's good to be. It, it's going to be a difficult journey without you here, but we thank God who gave us that opportunity to share life with you. Thank you so much, Church. Pray for the children. 
pray for them, that God give them the grace. And the bishop, and I also want to encourage these children, Wanja, Winnie, Maureen, and Randy. Your mother has left a legacy. You have to continue where she left it from. The faith that she held on, you have to keep moving on. And if this was her home, you have to make this your home as well. And then it shall be well with you. God knows, and he knows why it has to be this way. God bless you. I have no words to say. Uh, may her soul rest in peace. Uh, just a song, a small song, please, band. Uh, you know, you know, Mildred actually, you know, she was a lovely uh, mother. Let's turn this funeral into dancing. You know, there's a day I went to Mumias. <laughs> I didn't know that it was a funeral. Uh, the way those guys were dancing and they were singing. So please, band, give us a number. Then let's just stand up and maybe just sing and praise God because she lived a life that was very good. talking about uh, Sister Mildred Ikua, who was actually the head teacher of uh, our school, our church school here. And uh, we have the, the school with us. So I'll ask the school, uh, the, the, the pupils, are, they are called pupils or students? Eh? In Kiswahili? Wanafunzi. So secondary school, university, primary, Wanafunzi, right? <laughs> but in English, pupils. Second school? University? Okay. So <laughs> this is why it's unfair. Uh, because class one, university, wanafunzi. But in English, it's different. Uh, so I, I, I'm just waiting for teachers. No, no, the student, okay. the pupils. We have uh, Stacy Gira. She has a something, a tribute. Just come. We also have Maxwell Muduri.
Good afternoon. I am I am Maxwell Muzuri. I will read a tribute on behalf of the lower primary pupils. Sorrow fills our hearts this sad moment. A sorrow that is deep and personal. Teacher Midred has silently closed the door of life and departed from us. Our life will be empty in the areas that she had brightened for us. Madam was a living proof of how fine a person can be. She was a good teacher to all of us, even though she never taught us. She always came to check what we did in class. She was also a good and loving friend to all of us. The character of the life she lived might be summed up in a few words. She was sincere, she was honest, and she was also loyal. We felt her love when she addressed us at the assembly, and we found a reason to laugh. Whenever she asked us to tell our to tell parents to come to this to the school meetings, she insisted that she must not see house help, not unless they were our parents. She will come to see if we have been served enough food in the dining hall. She also came to check how we play in the field. She really cared for us. She had a human heart and we will miss our lovely head teacher. Our condolence to the family. We know that God gives life and takes it. We thank him for your life. Rest in peace, dear madam. Uh, we have a uh, class eight. Uh, Justin Kalunde. Good afternoon. I'm Justin Kalunde, as you've heard. And I'm in class eight, a uh, pupil of Gospel Assembly Christian Academy. I'm here to read a tribute to our beloved head teacher on behalf of the upper primary pupils of Gospel Assembly Christian Academy. <clears throat> it is an honor to read this tribute to Madam Mildred, a tribute on behalf of the pupils who cherished Madam so much. She was a friend and a teacher. Being in school, we never became homesick. She was our mother away from home, our strong pillar for the period we've known her. Our great success as a school in our academic excellence and general welfare is attributed to this great heroine whose memorial we conduct. Whenever the head teacher was out of school, we would be told about her whereabouts, but for once, we got disturbed. Madam was not anywhere in our vicinity for a whole week, and everyone was quiet about it. Perhaps the teachers thought she would get well and return, but who knows what fate has in store for us. The news we received on Friday was born, ch was born chilling, that our lovely teacher was no more. The loss is there, tangible and real within everyone. We felt empty and feeble because everything was mind-boggling, imagining that we would never see Madam drive in, the, drive in in the morning 
and first peep to see what goes on in our classes before sit settling for her chores at the office. But Madam Mildred exemplified life, love, laughter, and a willful belief and faith in seeing the best in everything that we have, the most tranquil environment for learning. To us, Madam was a rare individual, a multi-talented teacher who excelled at whatever she did. I know that in many cases, teachers are tough on the learners, but I don't recall when Madam ever lay her hands to punish us for, what, for doing wrong. Her words were sufficient to keep us on track and grease our wheels. However, she was never associated with failure and treated failures with great contempt it deserved. It was clear she would ask every teacher to be hard on us, kind of attend, and remain the motherly figure she was, asking what happened when she well knew. But it was for our good, and we ap appreciate her much. And so today, as the people of Gos in Gospel Assembly Christian Academy, we honor her profound by profoundly feeling and expressing our loss, but by also remembering her, an amazing teacher who has played a unique and special role in our lives. We remember Mrs. Ikua as our teacher who has molded us into responsible pupils. As a teacher, you will be deeply missed. In the years that lie ahead, I'm sure as a school, we will always remember how closely you worked to ensure that we have a wonderful stay in our school. Changing our dining menu to suit the pupils was just taking your time to look, sorry. Changing our dining menu to suit the pupils and just taking your time to listen to our contributions, however insignificant others would consider them. This was indeed a sign of teamwork and that you wanted our voices to be added to conversations in Gospel Academy. As you will always, you always exercised humility and we were motivated to, to exercise that among our peers as well. We thank God for the seed you sowed. It will soon sprout and become a big tree that will be the essence in years to come. You are always loyal to us and a special friend to many, and today we honor this as we recall special moments. As your teacher, your lessons were humorous and learner-centered. Your practical approach made concepts very easy to comprehend, and so was the reason we did well in your subjects. You raised the bars in higher time. You raised the bars higher in terms of our academic performance, and the only way we do what your will is ensuring that we continue to work, achieve good results, and give you a smile wherever you are. Our dear madam, you are amazing, unique, special, absolutely. We'll remember you with all your special touch and memories from all the days gone before that we we are privileged to share with you. And today, we'll grieve for you and cry for you and even smile because of you. And in all the tomorrows, we'll feel you gone in some ways, but your presence ever near. Go well, stay well, always. Thank you. Um, you know, one thing about Sister Mildred is uh, she was a giver. Uh, you know, when I came from the hospital, those well, when I was admitted in the hospital, and I was there for a whole week, and she kept on praying for me. Actually, she used to call me, uh, praying for me. And um, when I came out of the hospital, the first day I came to church, I met Sister Mildred outside there, and uh, she asked me, "Today, can I hug you?" <laughs> She's never. Uh, then I said, "Why not?" So she did that. And unfortunately, when she felt sick, I wanted to return the same favor when she came out of the hospital. So, which never happened. That's why it's heavy for me when I look at it from that point. Uh, it's so, so hard uh, for me, but Sister Mildred was 
a dear child of God. Uh, even in the cell group, she was a dear child of God. Hong and Patas made it mildly and a gossip. I never saw her anywhere, even outside there. Kwa Vikundi our mama. I never saw her in that. Uh, so she actually lived her life very well. So what I'm saying is a challenge. Weo kikufa, testimony gani tapeano kwako? Just ask yourself that question. Because we'll be here mourning you. <laughs> Tutapeano tribute gani? Are we going to lie about you? Please, uh, think about it. Uh, so we have uh, the parents, the school parents. Uh, we have uh, Justin, no, no, not Justin, Patrick Zuo. So that we go faster, Camelita Nekesa. Praise the Lord. God is good and all the time, especially even at a moment like now when we are here to condole with this family. Surely it's something that is extremely painful. Everyone is asking, how could it have happened so quickly, so soon? Maybe we would have wished to have teacher Mildred a little longer because Mildred was a blessing to everyone who encountered with her. And for us, speaking on the parents, it's first of all to wish condolences to the family and friends. And lead it to say that, yes, this is something which was a surprise to all of us, and even more so to the family. But we know it was not a surprise to God. Because we all know that we serve a God who is omniscient. He had seen it coming. But somehow for us, and even for the family, it was a surprise. And therefore, maybe much, the little that we could do is to direct you to that God who had seen it. Because he remained faithful. And he is a God who sees what you are going through. The questions that teacher Kezia, Kezia mentioned, you know, those hard questions, none of us here may attempt to answer. But there is a God in heaven who is able to see your pain, the questions you have. And I believe just like Job, in first chapter of Job, verse 21, when in one, just one day, Job woke up, and before sunset, he had lost seven sons and three daughters. And Job, when he looked back at those ten graves, freshly dug, said, Naked I came into this world, and naked I will return. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And I can attest that teacher Mildred was just more, to me it was, she was more of a friend because we used to interact a lot in the office. We could chat. I knew so much about her. She would share with me her health challenges and all that. But one thing that stood out, she was a worshiper. And it's my prayer that as a family, you continue worshiping that God that your mom loved so much and so dearly. And without any shadow of doubt, I know you pull through. Yes, it's painful. Yes, no one understands it. But we know when we direct you to Christ, he'll come through for you in a way that only him knows best. Because for sure, it's not easy. Teacher Mildred was an amazing person. What I would say much about her is that she was so kind-hearted. Her relationship with parents was something that was so personal. You know, it was not just uh, attending to someone with the same approach. She customized the needs that parents have and children. And she also was able to address diversity. I think in this school we have parents from different races. We have parents. Uh, uh, children from different socioeconomic backgrounds, and every talent was precious in the eyes of teacher Mildred. That's the person we are talking about. She would give you undivided attention, regardless of who you are, where you come from, you know, uh, and that was really touching. Therefore, for us, we feel really challenged, and I just asked myself a question. Am I able to be a blessing to others the way teacher Mildred was. 
that everyone who interacted with her would come out with a smile. Even when things were difficult, even when things were challenging, Mildred would always figure a way of letting you know the real truth, but come out smiling and give you hope. That's the kind of person we are talking about. Therefore, our prayer for the family particularly is that God will grant you the fortitude to walk through this. And just like Job said in Job chapter 42, where he says that he used to hear about God, but his eyes had seen him. That also you are going to encounter the God that your mom loved so much. Because only God can walk you through this. And he'll do it because he remained faithful and he remained true. Keep strong. We shall keep you in prayers. And we know in the end you testify that our God is faithful. God bless you and keep you strong. Praise the Lord. Um, my name is Kamilita Nekesa. I am a parent. I'm also a servant at Overcoming Faith Church, where I minister in the children's ministry. And um, I'm also a teacher by profession. So here I'll be wearing two, three crowns as a teacher, as a parent, and as a, a minister of the gospel. One day, I boarded a matatu with my children from church, going home. And in that matatu was the new head teacher of this school. I had not met her by then. So when my children entered the matatu, they started saying, head teacher, head teacher, head teacher, sasa, head teacher, how are you? And everybody in the matatu started looking at the lady that was being called head teacher. So I just waved at her. We had not met. Later on, we met, and we became great friends to the extent that when she came to knew me more she invited me to be the guest of honor during the school clo closing ceremony in the year 2017. Today I honor a great woman, an educator, a friend, a partner in education who was willing so much to make us parents part of the school system. She never put us aside, just as some schools do, but we felt as part of the school system, especially during the uh, school meetings, the school clinics, she made, us she made us participate. Every time you came to those meetings, you felt like you were not just coming to hear what they had to say, but she made us participate. If you didn't want to talk, she would say, mama so-and-so or baba so-and-so, say something. Uh, she was a friend. We be later became very great friends. And uh, the last time we interacted, she told me we were here at the dining hall on the closing day. And as I advanced to say hi, she started walking away. And I asked, Madam, why are you walking away? And she said, I don't see you as a parent. I see you as a fellow teacher. And I didn't know that spiritually as she was walking away, she was already walking away from me. And so today, this morning, I ask my children, what is it that you loved about your head teacher? And they told me she was kind and understanding. And then I asked them, did your teachers tell you to say that? They said, no, it's not our teachers. Then how come you know she was kind and understanding? And she said she was kind enough to wait for our parents to pay school fees without sending us from school. And also, she was kind so that she would pay school uh, money for the trip for the children whose parents had not already paid, and then the parents would pay later so that the children would go for the, for the trip. That did not come from me. It came from the children. On Wednesday, actually, my daughter came home uh, on Tuesday and told me that our head teacher was not feeling well. That was last week. So... I started to chat with her, and she told me she was at Gateway, and uh, she was uh, going to spend the night there. I also had lost a friend, uh, uh, sorry, a close family member, and we were preparing to go home. So we left, and we came back, and I was thinking that she was recovering. I followed up through the teachers. I thought she was getting better, but unfortunately, she left us. Now, to Maureen, teacher Maureen, keep the education fire burning in the family. You are walking in her steps. Please keep the 
family fire of education burning. To the whole family, I want to live with Isaiah 40. May you read Isaiah 40 and may the Lord of Comfort be with you. To Mr. Wanyama, the deputy, you are stepping in great shoes that may not fit you, but I pray for God's strength as you walk that way that you may be able to take the school to greater heights. Now, to all the teachers, I pray that you continue with the good work that she had started in Gaka so that the school may grow more. And to all the learners or the pupils, I pray that the Lord be with you and may you find strength in God as you move forward, forward without your head teacher. May her soul rest in eternal peace. Amen. Praise God. I think uh, if we can spend 20 minutes just for this tribute, I'll be very happy. Please, if you come here, just one minute. Just one minute, and we'll appreciate you. Uh, so, teacher, hey, teacher Wanyama, this is now the debut head teacher uh, and the team. Please, when you are here, please just spend a little time so we, you know, we need to listen to the word of God. Be like Sister Mildred. She used to keep time. Where are the teachers? Please. So we... Praise God. Praise God. Uh, much has been said, and uh, I believe uh, that if we will have given time to each one of us who interacted with Madame, then uh, we'll take um, many years to just say uh, what Madame has done to uh, your lives and also to our lives. Uh, before me, allow me introduce my uh, my team. Uh, we have uh, teachers. I'll start from my far left. Uh, we have teacher Catherine. Uh, we have teacher Beatrice. We have teacher Janet. And also, she's the head of uh, uh, pre-primary. We have uh, teacher Abigail, grade, grade two teacher. Teacher Ann, uh, who also heads the lower primary section. Uh, we have uh, teacher Virginia, who joined us this year, uh, taking care of grade one. We have uh, teacher Monica here, uh, also happens to be uh, the secretary, and uh, she really interacted so much with Madame now that they were sitting in the same office. Uh, on my right, we have uh, teacher Bosman, who is in charge of uh, uh, ICT, but also undertakes some subjects. Uh, we have uh, our chief academic officer, uh, teacher Matthew. Uh, then lastly, we have uh, Madam Kezia, uh, who has uh, already said, who has already spoken. Uh, we still have more teachers, but uh, because of uh, uh, some commitment somewhere, they are not here. We have teacher Noah, we have teacher Eric, and also we have uh, teacher Rina. So this is, our this is uh, the team that has been working with uh, Madam, uh, Madam, and uh, there is a lot. If we were to give each one of them time to speak, but now we just give one to say something, and is uh, teacher Bosman. Thank you.
Well, thank you so much. It's an honor to be in front of you to pay tributes to our beloved head teacher, Madam Mildred Ikua. I know that we've said a lot, and now that we are just coming up like the last group, we would not really wish to repeat what has been said. We know that uh, Madame's demise is coming against the backdrop of so many things. That is in terms of its timing. The timing was not very proper. It was very untimely. I know you'll say that every death is untimely, but in our own view and how it happened, we made conclusions that uh, Teacher Mildred's death was really untimely in terms of time, the condition and the prevailing conditions around the country, and so many things that former speakers talked about. We had pastor mentioned a few things that we are all now privy to. So as, as a team that has been working closely with Madam Head Teacher, we have a tribute, but uh, because of time, we unified that into one tribute that I'm going to take you through. So, it contains the experiences that most of us had with Madame, and uh, we made contributions. And because I'm going to speak for different minds who had different things, so you will just allow me to go through the submissions that they gave. How does one express the amazing essence and spirit of our head teacher? Her selfless generosity, uncompromising belief in all that is good, and her unwavering commitment to the staff and the pupils at large. Words, even the very best of the words, cannot pay tribute or truly capture the sense and laws that we are feeling today. In whatever role we knew her, from whatever vantage point, she stood as part of someone special to us. We met Madame just as she was beginning her role as, as the head teacher in Gospel Assembly Christian Academy. Since most of us came almost the same time, most teachers she found, and some of us came just shortly after. Her special leadership abilities, charismatic personalities were readily apparent. It was clear that she would most likely be an outstanding leader. This marked This marked the beginning of our long-lasting professional friendship and scholarly collaboration. Mildred was committed to her roles and focused on improving our school and its systems. During her tenure, the immense improvement in our structures was noticed. We had an improvement in our classrooms, in our library, and I know parents are aware that we have a working library where pupils are able to get books at the end of every year. There was an improvement in our computer laboratory and also the remarkable changes in the kitchen department. And the pupils said they were able to eat what they wished at that time. There was also an effort that she worked tirelessly to improve our transport sector, however much it proved futile, but we really appreciate her for that. Presently, there was a plan to do our compound, put gabbros and slabs, so that at least the face of the school compound was also uplifted. The measurements were taken, I know she has them. Maybe somewhere, whoever is taking up will get that. So she has done a lot to the school. Let me not forget the remuneration, of the, the remuneration of the staff at large, because this increased by the year, and we had a, we kept the spirit going because we were motivated by all that. Now, there was one thing that is evident and should be noticed as well, that is the school population. We know very well that when Madame came in and now that she's, she's exiting, the population has doubled in the school. The numbers she found, right now I think it's twice or more. So that we also attribute to her success. We also, we've also had an improvement in our academic standards. 
And last year, the school posted a mean grade of 342.79. To us, that was the highest since the history of our school. And we just didn't understand why that. 342.79 last year. And we are really wondering why when her star just begins to shine, then that is the time she has to exit. So she's living well, according to us. There is something to celebrate. And so I say that the candle just begins to glow brighter when she, and when we needed her more. So when the systems begins to work and she has a bigger picture of the school, what our lovely bishop would say that a vision greater than the provision, Madame saw so much. And she was borrowing a lot from the bishop just as, a, as has been alluded to by the former speakers. Be firm and friendly to the learners. That was her policy. She always insisted that as teachers, we must be very friendly. Friendly in the sense that the learners, the pupils, should be able to approach you without fear, but you also be firm so that they do the right thing. She was very jovial. She, had, she would smile so much, but let not her smile deceive you and think that she was that friendly. It had limits. It had boundaries. And teacher Kezia talked about that. They were closest friends. We are also very close friends, but we could not, not do anything wrong. Always in a school step, set up their issues. Issues, some are, some are reported by parents. And whenever there was an issue that was reported in her office, she would call you. Now, you had to think well what you are going to say, because you would not just walk into that office and walk out. You must have done your research best so that you know what you're going to tell about the issue that happened, the steps that you've taken and where you've reached with the matter. If it's about the parents, you'd be the first person to call that parent. And she asks you when you called what happened. You'd not lie because then she would also follow with another phone call. So she has made us very strict. She has made us very diligent in the way we've also done our service delivery to the school. I'll move faster, and so I'll also talk about, apart from a devotion to her work, there was also the devotion part to her family, and we could tell it was crystal clear that Madame loved her family so much. We used to have meetings, and in any meeting, whenever she had an agenda, you'd find a family come in, telling us that this is what we do at home, and we must do it here. And she loved us, because she used to tell us, by the way, she used to tell us that I wonder why I came to work with you. Because you are very young and I'm limited to the content of what we can be sharing. You are just like my children. You are the age mates of my children. And so she took us and was just advising us like her own. That is how much we became close. That is how much she protected us. Some of us from college, you come and then maybe gospel assembly is our first working, working place. But she received us with all that weakness that we had. She has molded us, and we are, we've grown stronger under her guidance as the head teacher and a meticulous one at that. Next is about we have a school wall. We have our school wall where all the teachers are. And this, in this school wall, just like any WhatsApp group, issues come, issues are posted, debates come, some are initiated by the teachers. If you would be part of that wall, you would wonder what kind of head teacher we had, because she would just post things that are like, okay, we were like, do we comment or we just go silent? She was at our level, and psychology says that for you to work best with people, you have to be at the same point. She fostered that. The wall was very warm. And by the way, from when these things began, that wall has just been about the updates about the head teacher, and finally to this point when we are now dealing with the arrangements. We're still wondering how that wall will be when we finally resume our, 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 our duties. 
But we hope we'll have strength. We hope we'll have that energy to continue. She wanted us to be united and to work together as a team. We had team building activities. We went out several countless number of times. Madame took us to coast, to Mombasa. We visited Mombasa, we, si we visited Malindi, we went to Kuale, all that. She was just like we were. She was even younger than us because that fun that she had, even a bit of us were a bit reserved. But she was showing us that you have to get up, you're still young. She would make jokes and say, I wonder what kind of a stuff I have. You're just quiet and you're at your prime age. I expect much from you. Latest, we went out to Kiambu. She also took us there. And ahead of that trip, she pulled our legs in a meeting and told us, the teachers, I'm taking you somewhere. But I wonder, you might end up wasting my money because you're not the type. You're not the type Ya kujia chilia. She used that, that term. You're not the type that will go and do the things I expect you to do. Because the place I'm taking you to, we are never in a staff room. We are not in a class. She even went ahead to say that, you know, when I look at teacher so-and-so, it's like you want to preach. So, <laughs> she pushed us that much. On the very day when we were going out, there was though pastor finally accompanied us, Pastor Tom. And Pastor Tom, I'm very much aware that you could not be privy to what was cooking, but we were headed somewhere. So just when we reached, I could eavesdrop and hear what pastor was asking that. This place where we've been brought, one of the congregants might see me and take a very bad report that I saw pastor somewhere. And so the deal changed and then we opted for plan B, hoping that there'll be another time we will have another date with the madam and then it has ended up where it has been. I'm finishing up because there is just so much. I can't just say all that. We have a lot for the head teacher. Now, we know that the teacher is not there, but we are her brain children. It is therefore incumbent upon us to ensure that the good work that the teacher began, the good work the teacher has been doing continues and that we will, and that we will do. I know that each of us here has a word that she has, that we've retained from the head teacher. There is that one thing that we know, we have. The way we worked when she was still the binding works that we had. She's not there but we're going to continue doing that. Her will has to be accomplished. Madame loved her work. Madame loved her work. And she used to be sick at her workplace. She used to be sick. But even when she was sick, she used to come to work. So for that reason, we've never had a reason to doubt that we are not supposed to come and work. Even when we are sick, we were motivated. For your information, the day Madame was hospitalized, she was here the whole day. She was here working. She was in our office and we never realized until the time she went home. For us, we thought she just went home normally, only to later hear at night that uh, she was, it was extreme and had to go to the hospital. That was the teacher we talk about. As I conclude, just my message, first to my head teacher, teacher Mildred, let me address you for once, for I believe your spirit is with us and you'll keep us going. You embraced us and was patient enough to make us learn and adjust. Such a very rare traits to come by. It's sad enough that we won't be seeing you on that seat, sharing our staff meetings, and correcting each of us on our various areas of weaknesses. We won't have you on our wall anymore, mocking and rebu rebuking us at the same time. Would that, would that we had many more like you, but you are one of her kind and will be sorely missed as a colleague, mentor, and a friend. Mildred, a caring, beloved family lady, a cherished colleague, a mentor, and a friend, you'll be missed by many. 
but never will you be forgotten by those who are fortunate enough to have known you. Last words to the family that Mildred, teacher Mildred has left. We know that it's tough, and as teachers, those who've been close, we know all that you've, you've had to undergo. Now that she would share so much with Kezia and with us, so we've came to know a bit of what has been going on, but we want to ask you and pray for you to have, to anchor yourself on the Lord, because you're going to find solace, and he's going to take care of you. As a school, we're going to end, but we say that let our dear mom rest in peace. Thank you so much. We are sorry, but uh, okay. We are sorry for that. May you be blessed. Thank you, teachers. <laughs> I didn't know that uh, we are dealing with teachers. Uh, sorry for that uh, earlier statement. I didn't know that we are dealing actually with teachers. So that's why we are here right now. That's why we are still here, because of teachers. You know, they have a lot to talk about their boss. Uh, so we will just move straight to the, the what now, yeah, subordinate staff. Where's Florence? Please, one minute. I'm not going to sit down there. I'll just stand here. One minute. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Kwa machina naitwa Florence. Mi mini staff, there are other staffs there. They can stand, you see them. You can sit. Mine is to say that we have worked with Teacher Mitred for six years. She was such a wonderful head teacher. She was so good. We will miss her smile, her laugh. You can go to see her in the office. When you have an issue, she will start loving from afar before you reach there. She can just look at me and say, Florence, I know why you have come here. So I will miss her so, so much because she's a good and wonderful teacher. To the family, I will live with you. The word of God in the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 6. It says that you acknowledge the Lord in all your ways, and this shall lead your parts. May God literally bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, people are clapping for you because of what? Keeping time. Ukiongea na watu wakupiki makofi, just get yourself. <laughs> now, where's this boy called Rushil? Rushil, I think, is uh, our brother here. Just come one minute, please. We, we know, you know these guys, whenever we have like anniversary, they are here doing stuff. So he's one of the guys. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for this opportunity. Uh, it really came as a shock, as a shock to me. When just my mother told me that Madame had left. I don't want to take much time just to say something that we all know God has a plan for each and every one of us. Everyone has a different destiny. And as it is said, all rivers have to flow and they'll flow at the same place. But the way they'll flow is how they'll be defined by others. And I can surely say that Madame's life has been really impactful for us. She has really been helpful to us. Just remembering one moment as she was in our life, I was really joking one day and I was saying, Madame, why, why are we really working hard? You know, you only live one life, you only live once, you should enjoy. And then she told me, the importance of diligence, and she, and she told me that you die once, but you are living every day. So living every day to the fullest is really, really important. And she diligently did her work, and uh, I don't have much to say, and really words 
cannot feel the void that she has left, but I urge the family to stay strong. My brother here, Randy, I'm always there for you. We're always there. And I don't have much to say. Thank you. Uh, praise God. Now we are landing. We are landing. Pastor Tom, I think, uh, is the school administrator. And uh, thereafter, maybe Pastor Tom, you will introduce the school director in that order. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, yeah, it was a very heavy heart that uh, stands here today. It's not been an easy time at all. Um, the past few days, um, I, um, I joined, uh, um, I first knew Mildred in 2017 when I joined the administration uh, department. And uh, we have been working together in regards to things like the budgets for the school, the financials, uh, catering, transport, development, and uh, many other things. And uh, we used to sit every morning after the school has settled, we'd, I'd go in the, to our office, and we'd look at the day, do some projections for the week, do some problem resolution, and we work together that way. And what I can tell you about Madame uh, or uh, Mildred, is she was a very visionary woman. Uh, when uh, COVID struck last year, you know many private schools were closing, uh, schools went out of business, and children transferred. But she was very determined to make sure that this school would stand. And she worked hard, and she did her best to work together. We put, brought in the IT people as well, and she made sure she pushed and pushed and just made sure everything, the ship went, was continuing afloat. And by the grace of God, we never even had a, a break, the kind of break that so many schools had because of that spirit of leadership and vision that she had. Um, I think that as the children have mentioned, she was like a mother to everybody. She would mother us all. Even me when I was not feeling well, she'd say, hey, Pastor Tom, you need to do this A, B, C, D. And she really encouraged us. We also know from the parents that she knew her parents very, very, very well. She knew them. Sometimes we'd be looking and saying, hey, this one has not paid for a long time. What do you think about? No, 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 don't worry about this one. I know him. I know her. I just give them time. I know their story. And true to form, that would exactly happen. We would not fail to be able to collect the fees. And so we've lost somebody who has been very, very special, somebody who was a friend, a colleague, a parent, a mother, a visionary, anything that you can think of that is good. It was all rolled into her. So it's with just heavy heart that we are here to have to see her off. Uh, it was very untimely. We did everything that we could in terms, especially uh, in terms of prayer, even fasting, calling on God. And so we're all shocked and very dis disappointed when she still passed. But we still knew that God is in control of everything and his ways are not our ways, they are higher. So, um, this is, uh, we cannot, we can stay all here all day, all, all day, but we don't have time. Uh, we just want to say, you know, family, just remember, we are going to do our best uh, to see you through even this period and even in the days to come, and we will be there for you in whatever way that we can. This was a great woman of God, a great woman, uh, a great lady uh, in, the, in the school, and we really, really are going to miss her. So let's remember, let's pray for the family very much, uh, continually, and uh, we know God will see them through and give them the grace and strength for the days that are to come. So rest in peace, Mildred, until we meet again. God bless you. I told Praise God, um, hallelujah. I just want to 
thank God even in this in, in moments such as this. We a precious child of God, a precious member of our staff. Uh, it's, it's inconceivable for me to imagine how you could replace someone like that uh, in her role that she played in our school uh, for those many years that she has worked with us and with me specifically. But good is the will of the Lord. Um, there's a, an old song we used to sing many years ago and we would say there's a whole lot of people going home. You know, and this is one of those people that the Lord um, decided to take out from amongst us. And um, I know we are all troubled, we are all shaken, and we have so many questions. And uh, sometimes we, we wonder why would God do such a thing to a wonderful person such as... Uh, teacher Mildred Ikua um, but the Bible says uh, many are the uh, desires of our hearts but the counsel of the Lord that shall stand so many scriptures that establishes that establish the fact that God does as he pleases when he pleases with whom he please so in my uh, tribute to um, Sister M Mildred Ikua, I would like to share a few things, but before I do that, I would like to sing uh, a song. And I want to pray that you all, brothers and sisters, could be encouraged and you could be Mujipe um, Moyo. And so. Tempted and tried, we of met to wonder why it should be thus all the day long while they are thus living above. should be that's all the day long while they are others living about us never molested though in the wrong let's sing the chorus now father along we know about it father along we understand why cheer up cheer up my brother leave him the sunshine will understand it all by sing again the chorus father lord father Stand 
Listen to this now. When death has come and taken our loved ones, it leaves our home so lonely and drear. Then do we wonder why the sprawl? Living so we can year after year. I'll sing it again. When death has come and taken our loved ones, it lives a home so long. Then do we wonder why others prosper, living so we can year after year, Father alone, Father. Understand me, oh, by the faithful till death, say our loving master. A few more days to labor and wait. Toils of the rod will then sit as nothing as we sweep through. Let's sing the chorus now. Father, long we know all about. Father, long, Father, long we understand what cheer up, cheer up, my brother, sister. Jesus Christ, while here on earth, the scriptures tell us that he experienced a death, not the death that he died himself, but the death of a loved one, 
and this was Lazarus. And the scripture tells us that uh, when Jesus came four days late, Lazarus had already been dead. Lazarus had already been buried. And the scripture says, and he wept. In fact, they say the shortest verse in the whole Bible is that verse of scripture that says, Jesus wept. What does that tell us? It tells us that uh, when we grieve, the Lord grieves with us. Understandably that it is God's will and it is a part of God's grand and master plan. Um, yet again, we feel heartbroken. Myself, I can assure you that I feel heartbroken. I feel gutted um, by the passing on of Sister Mildred uh, Ikua. Uh, it has come as a shock to me. It has touched my heart. It's heart-wrenching just to know that the other day, you know, and that goes with everybody. You were with her and talking to her and, and all of a sudden you receive the news that she's no more and, and this applies into uh, to, to, to every one of us when we lose one of our loved ones and so sometimes we are left with so many questions we ask why does God a loving God uh, do things like this but I want you my brothers and sisters to know that this is just the way of all men on earth the Bible says this this is the way, there's a scripture, just uh, if you can give me that scripture, it says, this is the way of all men uh, of the earth or on the earth. First Kings chapter two, verse number two, it says, I go the way of all the earth. It says, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. These are powerful words. Um, even you, yourself, when you are face to face with death, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Remember, this is the way of all the earth. Since I go the way of all the earth, that's the person who is faced with death. But then he turns around and speaks a message and the message that he speaks is to the living. And he says, but thou be strong therefore. So we that are left behind, let us be strong and show ourselves as God fearing people, mature people, people that understand the word of God. The Bible says, and the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. That's found in the book of Daniel. It says, and the people that do know their God, they shall be strong. And I want to say to you that have been left behind, the children, the husband, the extended family members, the staff that she worked with at Gaka, uh, the members of the church that she fellowshiped with, I want to say to you all, be thou strong therefore, and show yourselves as men and women that honor God, men and women that fear God. That scripture that I've just made reference to is found in the book of Daniel chapter 11, verses number 32, it says, and such as do wickedly against uh, the uh, covenant, thy covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits I want you to turn to your neighbor and say be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and so uh, Jesus spoke these words in the book of John chapter 14 uh, in verse number one he, he said these words, he says, let not your hearts be troubled. Um, somebody sang a song. Is there trouble anywhere? And I know there is trouble in someone's heart. 
I want to say, let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in Jesus. Jesus spoke and he says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God and believe also in me. It says, in my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. The next verse it says, uh, in verse number three, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. So I just want to urge you family members and friends that let us not have our hearts troubled beyond measure. When death has happened, let us accept that it has happened. There's nothing we can do about it. There's nothing we can do to change. We have to live with the reality and the fact of the imponderable um, things. We, 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 we have so many questions that we cannot fathom. We have to live with that. And once we have accepted, then we make some adjustments. Uh, life will no longer be the same for you children, for you. Uh, brother, life will no longer be the same. Uh, life will not be any more the same for us at Gaka, at our school. Yes, we can quickly say there is going to be a replacement here and there. That's necessary to keep the very things that she was passionate about. You see, in her memory, let us make this year uh, stream more successful than before. You that are in school as, as members of the staff and parents, in her memory, let's make the uh, results of this year beyond what we ever accomplished in the past. But this is because we want to honor her. We want to honor our head teacher, our head mistress. And so we want the devil to know that he, uh, this that has happened, it has happened. But we are not going to uh, walk away from the vision, uh, the passion that she carried in her heart. We are even much more inspired, much more enthused uh, to do more that our enemies may not find an occasion to celebrate. Uh, and I pray that God will give you uh, those uh, that work at Gaka, much grace. God will give you um, a heart to drive this vision forward. Uh, and uh, all this we shall do it in her memory and in her honor. So don't let your heart be overly uh, be burdened. Let us know that God will always... You see, there's a scripture that is found in the book of Romans, the 11th chapter. If we begin to read from the 33 verse, the verse number 33, in the book of uh, Romans, the 11th chapter, uh, verse number 33, it says, All the depth of the riches, uh, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are His judgments and His ways past finding out. If you try to piece things together with your um, a finite mind, with this limited mind, you try to ask here and ask this and question God about this and question God, you will never come up with answers. That is why in the song that we sang, I say that we will understand it in the by and by. So many things that we question about and we end up having sleepless nights over and never still never come up with answers to those questions uh, so let not your heart be troubled by such things all the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of god how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out the verse number 34 
goes on to say, he says, For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor? Anybody here that can advise God? Anybody here that is God's counselor? He says, Or who has first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again. Um, and then he goes on to say, he says, For of him and through him and to him are all things. That's, that's how God does his things. Uh, they are all for him and all through him and all to him. He says, For all things uh, are all things to him and to whom be glory forever. Amen. So please, the word that we shall go home with is be strong. Be strong. May you receive that spirit of comfort. And may you receive that spirit that strengthens you in the mighty name of Jesus. May I pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you even in times such as this, in moments like these, we still can say thank you for the life that she lived, the lives that she touched, the pupils that she influenced and prepared for a great future. We thank you for every single child at Gaka and even beyond that she touched as a teacher. I pray that they will always look back to be grateful that she they met her and lord we it is for that reason that we just want to bless you and to honor you now we ask that these hearts that are broken these hearts that are pained may you pour the oil and the wine to bring healing to bring strength to bring comfort to bring fortitude and peace even in the, in the midst of this turmoil, I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you touch your people. I pray for grace unto grace. I pray that, God, you will engulf every heart that is broken with a balm of Gilead. Your word again, it says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And may we receive grace to embrace this as something that is precious in your sight. Now we look unto the return of our Lord Jesus Christ with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and the sounding of the trumpet. We know that the dead in Christ shall rise first and we that are alive and remain shall be caught up together and then we shall be forever with our Lord thank you Lord and I pray that whatever burden is left behind as a result of her sickness and the subsequent demise may you touch people Lord may you send help us to help with this burden I pray that God until she is taken to her place of final rest May there be peace, may they be your spirit and presence to touch the hearts, especially of the children and the husband left behind. We thank you, we bless you. All these things we pray and we ask in and through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, God's strong son, amen. May God's peace be upon you. May God watch over you. May God keep you under the shadow of his wings. In Jesus' name, amen.
Okay, to move. Hi everyone, Winnie, I'm the second one. A lot has been said about my mom, our mom. I thought yesterday breaking the news of my mom's demise to my brother was the most gut-touching thing I've ever done. But every day I keep on hitting new lows because writing this eulogy took the life out of me. And now me standing here and reading it is even worse because I had the most amazing mother, the most amazing of them all. And I always say that when God was dashing out mothers, he gave me, he gave us the best mother because everyone who's spoken here has said that mom was a friend and genuinely she was my best friend. There's nothing that I could not call my mom and say, mom, this and this is happening, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's something silly I've seen on the road, she would be the first person I would call. And the only approval I ever really needed. My mother was heavily involved in our lives. I remember when she was about to get married, mom used to throw little tantrums because she felt like she was not spending a lot of time with her, yet she was supposed to. She was finally going to leave us. My mom taught me a lot of things, but she forgot to teach us how to live without her. I know my mom loved us because she never wasted any moment to tell us. Every chance she got, she told us that she loved us and that she cared about us. And I know. I hope to one day remember you without eyes, my eyes welling up. I hope to one day remember you and I smile in my heart. For I know that you're with the Lord. I know that you're with your parents. I think the daughters are not strong enough to present before they recollect themselves. I want to the elder daughter to say in very brief presentation if she can manage herself and uh, we proceed from there. Please. I'm going to read something that I wrote. It's a story about me and my mom. So my name is Cecilia Wanjai Kua, born to Dominic Kua Mujeru and Mildred Musavi Mukanzi. I am the eldest of four children. 
I am going to give you my life with my mother from my own perspective. Let me start by introducing my mother to all of you, my incredible mother. Her name was Mildred Musavi, Mwana wa Mukanzi Nende Teresa, as she fondly used to introduce herself. Mildred became a mother through me on June, June 13, 1992. And from that day, our journey began. She told, me on my, she told me on my many birthdays of how I was born prematurely at six months, of how I brought so much joy to them, rem remembering that they had lost a baby in a stillbirth. The first act of love she showed me was staying with me in the hospital as the doctors, in quotes, baked me in the incubator till I reached full term. There she gave me the name. She used to refer to me as the strength of my youth. Three months after I was born, when I was fully baked, the doctors hesitantly discharged me from hospital. Mom had had enough of the hospital, and even as doctors told her of the dangers of living, she acted in faith, and off we went home. To, and off we went home. To those who have, been, who have managed to go to Jambini, you know how cold it is. Now here is a new mother with me, an infant, on our way to the freezer village called Jambini. At the back of her mind, she has all, she had, she has all the warnings of the doctors. Who was Mildred? With faith that all will be well, we went, home f we went home. From there, she dedicated herself to thriving in this new mother role by caring for me. This was done by overdressing me in warm clothes and big duvets and overfeeding me lest I got pneumonia or mal malnourished. I jokingly used to tell her she's the reason that I am big bodied. I survived and I am, I am here today. My mother was a teacher, although she told us that she wanted to become a journalist. She would have thrived in that profession, knowing how she loved being told stories and telling stories and traveling. But Mukanzi, our grandfather told her, Mildred, I want you to become a teacher. That's the only career that will, that will enable you to have time with your family and children. You will see them grow and they will get education from the schools where you will be teaching. And as grandfather had advised, that who, that's who she became and oh, did she thrive in it. My mom was a disciplinarian, but her method was more subtle. She believed in dialogue. She always told us talking was more effective than beatings. She really hated beatings, mainly because in her childhood, it was viboko kwanza, no explanations. And if, and if you dared ask why you were being beaten, you will be answered by more beatings. Raising us, she chose different, but we still got beatings, but at least now we, we, to, we, we were talked to before being beaten. As a mother, she was and will remain unbeaten. She was a mother not only to us, her children, but a lot of young people all around us. She loved us so deeply and always told us of that fact. There is nothing that she could not do for us. We did not grow up rich or in abundance, but she raised us in unconditional love that surpassed all material things. If my mother could provide, she would move heaven and earth to do it. She raised us with selflessness, gentleness, and morals till her last days. My mother was my best friend. She has been a friend all my life. She has provided for me, schooled me, advised me, cried with me, comforted me, stuck it out with me, encouraged me, and rebuked me. She has taught me and given me life lessons that will carry, sorry, carry me through. I am here today because she did not give up. She was really excited and happy that I was getting married. She loved Emmanuel's personality and bubbly nature. She has stood by this relationship from the beginning and was ready for it to be finished. The last thing she did for me was to pay for my gown. The last thing I showed her was our rings and she gave me a, she gave me a thumbs up. And the last time I talked to her, she asked for kepombo water just to show how much she enjoyed the water that he used to bring her daily. I have never lived apart from my mother all my life, and I'm glad I did not because I got to do it, I got to do it with her all through and all days. 
I love you, mother, and I will keep you alive in my heart and in generations to come. I will uphold the values and visions you held for us. Rest well, mother. The mantle that you have passed, I gladly take. I will rise to become the strength of your youth as you call me till we are united again in heaven. Thank you and God bless you. Praise God. So, like Winnie said, this is the hardest thing you could ever write. Uh, to my mother, first off, I just want to tell you how much I miss you and how hard it's been every single day without you. Most of the time, I feel like this is all just a bad nightmare that I can't wake up from. Still look for you. I still wake up thinking you're here. You used to be the person we called when we are angry, scared, upset, or happy. You are my biggest cheerleader and fan. You are my best friend, my rock, and my person. You were the first to teach me the concept of unconditional love, which was the best gift you gave me. You lit up every room you walked in with your smile, and everybody who knew her knew she had very beautiful dimples. You were so welcoming and treated everyone with love. My friends used to tell me how lucky I am to have you as a mother. I am really broken. I miss your advice, your jokes. You used to call me your laughing machine. Every time I look at your photos, I'm reminded how much the loss your death has brought. I hope that heaven is as beautiful as you imagined. I pray that you're not in pain anymore and that you're happy. I hope and pray that every day you're proud of me and even though you're gone, your legacy will live on in all of us. You are bigger than this life and even after your death, your life has a huge impact on so many people. You are an incredible teacher and a mother who inspired everyone who knew you. I hope in my lifetime I get to be half the woman you are. I love you for always and I'll miss you till we meet again. Uh, I think uh, Randy is the, the, the son in this home, and um, as he makes his tribute, he will be also reading the eulogy of, uh, of the mother. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Randy Kua. And I want to tell mom, wherever you are, that I love you. And one thing that I would like to say that I liked about you is that, that you always had visions. You. You really always had visions for, for us all. Everything. You. You put us only to find out to go in Nanguvu and you kill to my family at Kuana Kitambo. And one promise that I want to make that it's, I will be them congojo that we will say it. I will hold this family because I'm the only son that you ever had. And I will hold this family until the very end of my, my life. 
and I thank you for being the best mother that I have ever had in my life. And I will, you will always stay in my mind, uh, in my heart, every day of my life. Thank you. Okay, Mildred Mukanzi Msavi was born in 1969. She got married to Mr. Dominic Ikua in 1990 and were blessed with four children, Cecilia Wanja, Winnie Mkasia, Maureen Wamoro, and Randy Mshiri Ikua. Mildred was hypertensive and therefore on blood pressure medication for some time. She started complaining of chest pains, headache, coughing, and was on medication for a week. However, the condition wasn't leading to her admission at the Kenyatta University Referral and Research Hospital on Wednesday, 25th, August 2021. Thereafter, she was taken to ICU. In the beginning, she showed some improvement until Tuesday, 31st, August 2021, when her health deteriorated, leading to the failure of her breathing organs. On Thursday, the family was called by the doctor informing them on the progress of Madame Mildred. The report was not good and the family left it to, to God. The following day, our beloved mother, our beloved mother rested and around, at around 2.30 a.m. She will be, read, she will be laid rest on Wednesday, 8th August 2021, at her rural, September 2021, at her rural home in Jambini. Kinangop South, Nyandarua County. May her soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you. Uh, Condolata, come and say just greetings. Okay. Praise God, Church. My name is Consolata. Mkanzi, I'm the sister to Mildred, I'm her follower, and just beside her being my sister, she has been so much, she has been so close to me, she's been a mother to me here in Nairobi, there's nothing that I go, that I, that I go through that she doesn't know, she's been so caring, she's just been all in my life, I really want to thank God because of of making me to be connected to her for her being to for her being my sister and and all the things that he has done in my life i cannot even be able to tell them all when i'm sick she's the she's the first one to know how i'm feeling and she she will always keep in touch and even times to take me to the hospital and to make sure that everything is okay so i've really i've really i've really lost a very big friend in my life, a mother, a mentor, and even the list is endless. She's been so loving to my children. In fact, my children, they, sometimes I envy, they used to love her more than myself because of the way she used to, she used to treat them more than even I, I could do. But all in all, it has been done and we cannot complain. We just thank God. Be blessed. I received the news of my cousin sister with shock. I'm still shocked, but I just surrender it all to God, and I beseech each and every one of us just to accept that, that it has happened. I told myself that I have to accept, and I have accepted. Mildred was a friend to me. Among all my cousins, she was my friend. She used to visit me at my place of work. We used to talk, but it's just so unfortunate that at the time that she befell sick and she passed on, we had spent about one month without talking. And I was always thinking about her, but I just thank God. May all of us accept as we release her to go and meet our maker in heaven. God bless you. Uh, when I, praise God. I would wish to say that... Uh, 
We have lost as a family from Lugari. Mildred is number 16 in our family. And uh, we are a family of 18. And she was the most jovial, a very loving daughter, a loving sister, very sensitive. She'd want to make uh, inquiries on everything. She will also provide, be there at all times. She'll give a lot of stories. She was ever happy. I was closest to her when we were growing. Uh, she, follows number, she follows me number two, and we were great friends. Uh, when she came to Njambini for marriage, it's me who came as an elder brother, and uh, I'm happy I can see four generations here. I've seen three daughters and a son. I know there's a future for the family. We have not totally lost, and I'm impressed today because we also have a daughter who is in another family. The generation is still growing. We know God has a purpose for Mildred's life. I'm impressed with this church so much because there is this idea of feeding. You have fed Mildred spiritually. You have clothed Mildred. You have given him warmth. You have given her warmth. And you have made her come up with this family. You have made her happy, available. She provides because of this church. And I want to thank you because you have changed lives. All these children who are here, they've gone through education because of this church. Through the church, I know the schools involved. So I want to take this opportunity as a family and say that what I've seen here today and the provision you have, you've had to the families is going so many generations. I want to request my niece and nephew, my niece who are here and nephew, that let us continue on the foundation our mother, your mother, uh, has laid in this region. Let us go to church. Let us know God. And let us live a happy life. Let us be approachable. Let us be loving. Let us have laughter. So create people to be your wealth and the word of God to be your direction. Thank you so much. I'm Fedia Zahwesa. Uh, thank you so much. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Baba Sharon. You know, he's a teacher also by profession, but he's a different teacher. Uh, thank you so much. So uh, this time, I think we just have a, a, a small song. Uh, then uh, we'll call uh, a man of God who will give us a, the word of God. Hey, uh, Jane, you're looking at me? Uh, then we'll be out of this place. Band.
I take this honor or privilege to invite uh, Pastor Jonathan, who will give us the word of God and the saints of God. God bless you so much. Pastor Jonathan. you have heard my name is uh, Pastor Jonathan and I want to take this opportunity to send my condolences to the family of our dear Mildred. It's indeed a very sad moment and we actually do not know how to behave in such a moment but good is the will of the Lord. And to the children, God that has seen you to this moment will see you through. Amen. I am not here for a long haul. I'm going to be quick. Much has been said and uh, scriptures have been quoted. And therefore, I'm not going to take much of your time. I just want to wrap it up. Amen. <clears throat> uh, appreciate the words that Bishop said here today and the prayer that he has offered. I hope it brought a lot of comfort to your souls. At such a moment as I listened to many tributes going through and as a pastor, as I have gone through Many of these occasions have seen many, uh, we've held funerals over time, sometimes for young people, sometimes for elderly people, sometimes for male, sometimes for female, sometimes for rich people, and sometimes for poor people. I've asked myself and I've had tributes go through. He was a great man, wise man, diligent person, a great person, hospitable. All terms have been used in these occasions. But death, which the scripture says is our enemy, has robbed us of such quality people. And today, as I summarize this occasion, I ask myself then, what is precious in this world? What is precious to a child of God? Is it silver and gold? Is it beauty? Is it... Um, Possessions of all nature. What is precious? Because it happens that everything that we count precious, time comes when death robs us. Praises be to the name of the Lord. So the title of my short message here, which I want to condense in as little time as possible, is what is precious. Hallelujah. What is precious? What is that thing that is so precious? I know we have a scripture that says precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of that is not where I get my inspiration today. So my anchor scripture is Psalms 49 and verse 8. It says, for the redemption of their soul is precious. Everything else that we have on the face of the earth, we may consider it precious, but the Lord does not consider all those things precious. We can count them one by one, 
the positions we have, the power that we have, the influence that we have, the blessings that we have, all of them combined are not precious. There is one thing that our maker considers precious and that is the redemption of your soul. And today, our dear sister has rested. But there is one thing that is precious to her, the redemption of her soul. That is what counts. Everything else said and done will be put in the basket of history. But something is going to outlive her. That is the redemption of her soul. The blood that Jesus Christ shed on Calvary that touched her soul, that is what is going to outlive. That is what is precious. We can talk about how diligent she was. We can talk about how great she was. But there is only one thing that will remain forever until that day of the trumpet. That is the redemption of her soul. That is what is precious. Why is the redemption of her soul precious? Because the redemption of her soul enables her soul to escape the penalty of sin. One, the redemption of her soul enables her to escape the penalty of sin. Two, the redemption of her soul enables her to escape the practice of sin. Through the grace of God, she becomes an overcomer for everything the enemy throws at her. You and, you and me, what is precious in our life is the redemption of our souls. Because the redemption of our souls enables us to escape the penalty of sin. The redemption of our soul gives us grace that sustains us and enables us to go, uh, to live on this face of the earth without the practice of of sin, without enjoying the practice of sin, continually in sin. Hallelujah. And the third and the most important that we all await on that day when the trumpet shall sound, the redemption of our soul enables us, hallelujah, to escape and to live Outside of the presence of sin. That is why it is so precious. It is precious because we escape the penalty of sin. It is precious because we are able to live it by the grace of God. And help us not to practice, to enjoy practicing sin. And it is by the redemption of our souls that we shall live in the kingdom of God where the presence of sin will no longer exist. Hallelujah. That is precious. So today we know that through the redemption of, of, of our soul the penalty of sin is not laid at her because our master took it away. Today we know that through the redemption of her soul, she has lived by grace through this life. And that is why we can testify of the goodness of the Lord in her life. Paul said, if there be any good in me, it's because of the grace of God. 
That grace of God that you obtain when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior enables you to do good. Enables you to perform good. If there be any good in her, it's because of the grace of God that was dispensed in her life because she accepted the Redeemer in her life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, children of God. Therefore, we thank God for this precious thing, which is the redemption of our souls. Hallelujah. And here, I want to condense, I want to do away with most of the scriptures. But if you just want to know how he did away with the penalty of sin, let's look at Exodus 12, 13. The Bible says, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the house where you are. And when I see the blood will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. This was the Passover. When you accept this Jesus and the blood is applied to you. He doesn't ask what you did. If you are whatever sin that is in you, the blood is able to take away the penalty. In this incident, if you did not have the blood on your doorpost, there was a penalty. And what was that penalty? Death. But if you had, and look at it, he never, the angel never asked who is inside the house. He didn't care who was in that house. All he cared was the blood. Because the blood took away the penalty of sin. It doesn't matter in that house, I believe, was Moses. And you know Moses was a murderer. The angel cared less. Well, Moses had killed the Egyptian. He said, all I need to see is the blood. Uh, in, inside there was Zipporah, who was the wife of Moses. And you know, he, she was cantacarous. And you may say, I am cantacarous like Zipporah. Our Lord does not care. Who is inside the house? He cares only for the blood. Because the blood takes away the penalty of sin. You can say, today you are listening to me and say, my sins are many as a red as crimson. But I want to tell you, our Lord cares not who is in the house. He cares only for the blood on the bow, at the doorpost. Let's ensure that this blood is at your heart. You accept Jesus Christ. Isn't he say in John, as many as received him, he made him the sons of God. Today, this Lord that made our dear sister a son in his kingdom is willing and ready to do the same to you. To the children, rest assured, because of this precious redemption of your mother, she may not be here with you, and she may not be there, but she's not lost. There is hope that one day when the trumpet shall, uh, shall sound, we shall see her face to face. Hallelujah. Because she accepted Jesus Christ as her personal as Savior. Hallelujah. Here in the presence of sin, uh, the redemption that is so precious takes away the presence of sin. This is not now. Sin is present, isn't it? Right now, sin is present. But I know there's a time that all the prophets have talked about. Isaiah talked about that time. Paul talked about that time. All the disciples talked about that time. A time is coming when the trumpet shall sound. And when the, uh, when the trumpet sounds, the Bible says our law will come down. Hallelujah. He'll first stop at the cloud level. And he will pick up his bride. And he will come again the second time. And he will come and land on the face of this wall. And he will set up his kingdom. And when he sets up his kingdom, the Bible says there will be no more pain. There will be no more tears. There will be no more presence of sin. And once there is no more presence of sin, 
the consequences of sin will be done away. And that is what is our hope as the children of God. We hope that our Lord will come. And one day we shall hear that sound. And the trumpet shall sound. And this sin that has caused death on the face of the earth will be done away. And we shall look at our master. And we shall see him as he is. And he shall call us. And as we heard in the morning, uh, we shall say, well done, my child. Well done, Mildred. Welcome. Hallelujah. Well done, so and so. Welcome into your father's rest. That is our hope. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. In Isaiah said, in Isaiah 65, 25, talking about this time when the presence of sin will be done away. He says, the wolf and the lamb shall feed together. And the lion shall eat straw like the bullock. And thus shall the serpent, uh, the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. That is our hope. That one time will come when the devil will not feed on our flesh. When there will be no sickness. When there will be no death. When there will be no disappointment. When there will be no sorrow. But that will only happen if you have received the redemption of our Savior. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. That is the hope of the saints. Hallelujah. Uh, here in Revelation 21 verse 4, it says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our Savior died on the cross to overcome and to conquer sin. Hallelujah. He died on the cross to redeem us. We may be going through pain now, but we know that our Savior paid it all. Through that death and resurrection on the cross, we have hope today. Hallelujah. Uh, Jesus resurrected from the dead and conquered death. Therefore, we have hope as the children of God that he that conquered death will be able to uh, conquer death at that hour of the resurrection. Hallelujah. And Jesus is coming back to earth again. Children of God, he's coming back. We have hope because he's coming back. He said he will and he's coming back. And even today, as we memorize our, the death of our sister, we know that he's coming back. And when he comes back, death will not hold our dead in the grave anymore. Her death will not bring sorrow to us anymore. Our Savior is coming back. Our Redeemer is coming back. He that has called us into the salvation is coming back. We have hope because he's coming back. Children of God, we may sorrow today, but he's coming back. We may have tears today, but he's coming back. We may have been hopeless today, but he's coming back. And when he comes back, he's coming back to conquer death. When he comes back, he's coming back to leave us, to give us life again. Oh, hallelujah. He's coming back. Our Savior is coming back. In Revelation 1 and 18, he says, I am he that liveth and was dead. I believe our sister one day, we will hear her say, I am she that liveth and was dead. Because our Savior is coming back to redeem us. Our Savior is coming back. And when he comes back, the dead in Christ will rise fast. Hallelujah. And he says, I'm he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Hallelujah. Our Redeemer is coming back. He's coming back to give us life. He's coming back to resurrect our dead. He's coming back to conquer our death. Hallelujah. Our Savior is coming back. Oh, he, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and death. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, 26, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Death, you shall be destroyed. We have a promise in the Bible. And we know that his promises are here. 
death, you shall be destroyed. You may bring sorrow today, but you shall be destroyed. We await for our master to break through this in the sky and come down. We wait. Our ears long to hear him. Our ears long to hear that trumpet on that day of the trumpet so that the dead in Christ shall rise and we shall be with our Savior. Oh, may God comfort you. May the Lord bless your church. May the Lord bless the family. Our Redeemer, oh, hallelujah, is coming back again. For he's saying, our Redeemer is coming back again and to give us hope and life. Let us not despair. Let us not look down. But let us know that we shall be overcomers. Death will not overcome us. But out through our Savior, we shall overcome death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's be up on our feet. We thank God that we have such hope. We thank God that we have such a, a hope in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May God bless you, church. May God comfort your family. May God be with your children. Fear not. He that has redeemed our soul will take care of you. He will comfort you. He will lead you through this life. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Glory be to God and glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's have a song, and after that song, well, I'll just request that uh, the, the family just step forward a little bit. We'll do, we'll pray, and then that will be the end of this memorial uh, service. God bless you, church. Thank you for staying through. She was really, really a great lady. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
hands towards them. Speak a word to the Lord of comfort, of strength, as we dedicate this family before the Lord. Uh, say something. So let's stretch forth our hands and let's pray. Heavenly Father, God in the heaven, we come before you this evening to bring this family that is bereaving before your enabling grace, O oh God. We pray and seek you, O oh God, in their lives this day. Remember them, each and every one, my Father. You know what them by name, O oh God. Remember to strengthen them. Remember to comfort them. Lord, let your grace be sufficient, Lord, in their lives to comfort them at this hour of need. Lord, stretch forth your hand and touch them. Touch them because they need that touch. A touch of consoling, a touch of comfort. Touch them, my God. Oh, my Father, each and every day, lift them up, my God. When they cry unto thee, hear them, Lord. My Father, when they seek you, my Father, oh God, oh, let them find you in the name of Jesus. Let your grace be sufficient. My God, uphold them, my Father. Hold them, my God, and lead them through this life journey. O oh, King of glory, may you be a supply, a supply of wisdom, a supply, my Father, of strength in their life. King of glory, oh, let your hand, my Father, never depart from them. I come against the devil and the devourer and all its ways and schemes, my God. Let it not have its hands upon these children and upon my father and the husband. I command the devil to go. Every confusion of Satan, let it depart. Devil, get out of their lives. My father, strengthen them, Lord. Uphold them, oh God. In the precious name of the Lord, I pray. And may the grace the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. Thank you, church. God bless you. God bless you, Richard. you, Pastor Jonathan. I know I'm encouraged. You know that scripture, <laughs> he talked about precious. Eh? Something precious. Uh, something precious. To me, it means a lot. But we thank God. Good is the will of God. Our sister has fallen and now she's resting. Uh, we come to an end of this memorial service. But uh, we have one thing that we we are appealing to saints of God, our friends, uh, our sister left us with a, a huge bill, somehow a bill, I'll say a bill. And the bill actually is about 500,000 shillings, this hostel bill. And that's minus funeral expenses. Now, on behalf of the committee, where I'm also a member, we are appealing to members or to you, saints of God. Maybe if you have something to give towards this, as we leave, maybe we get some baskets. Uh, so we just drop in. As we, as we move. Also, we have a WhatsApp group that is there in place. Please, if you have not joined, please join and see how you can help us. God bless you so much. Now, I want to thank uh, the bishop in his absentia. I'm just now giving a vote of thanks and we'll be out of this place. Uh, bishop in his absentia, uh, pastors, you know, the school and uh, the funeral committee, the families, both families, the one from Western and um, the one from uh, Nyandarwa. Uh, just God richly bless you. God richly bless you. Uh, Saints, of course, sometimes you see me opening WhatsApps to collect some money. I do it with pain, you know, just to open a WhatsApp collecting money for funeral. I wish it was a wedding, but for a funeral. It pains me a lot. So anytime you see me opening that WhatsApp, with a degree in Akula to Ugali, and, uh, you know, it's paining. Uh, so right now I know Cecilia 
will have been gotten married. Uh, right now, she'll be actually, <laughs> Pastor Ndimuri said, uh, Emmanuel was given traditionally. Uh, but because of the love of the mother, we asked her, do we postpone this wedding or what? She said, yes, because of the love of the mother. So, saints of God, let us stand with this family. I know it's very hard to lose, especially a mother. Uh, it's not easy to lose a mother. Uh, I'm not saying that it's easy to lose a father. <laughs> but the pain this mother went through uh, when giving birth, you saw her tribute. Uh, let's just remember this family. It's a young family. As we speak, Pastor Dimu said the father is still in the house. Uh, now you can imagine they're just on their own. Please, let us walk with them. Now, when they see this bill the way it is, it bothers them so much. So let us do a little more and stand with them. So now we give our friend a befitting a send-off. Send you. Amma? You know, <laughs> death is real. Death is real. Please, let me just say this. Anytime we come to church, these masks, please let us put them on. I, it, it pains me when I see some of us saints of God in church putting it down here. Then it's as good as not putting on that mask. It pains me. Uh, we are living in very hard times. Please, saints of God, let us just obey this ministry protocols and all will be well with us. So, thank you so much. I think we'll ask the family, we've already said the grace, we'll ask the family to uh, proceed, to get out, then we'll follow them. God bless you so much. But before we do that, um, Barrio will be on Wednesday, the 8th of September, uh, at Haruro Home in Jambini, uh, Nyandarwa County. Uh, the body leaves KU Mochari. Now, we have to KU, KU, we have to KU Mochari, eh? There is one on Thika Road, and there's one, is it Committee Road? Kawe, bypass, Kawa West. Eh? Northern uh, Bypass from Kiambu to Riru. So we are talking about the one uh, from Kiambu to Riru. So sometimes we go this direction because we know KU is this direction. We also have another KU there side. So the body will leave the mortuary on... Uh, Eighth, I think at seven o'clock in the morning for Njambini. So if you want to be there, maybe at the mortuary, uh, let's do it maybe early enough so that we don't again delay uh, the procession going to uh, Njambini. God bless you so much. Uh, see you there. Cool, be going to Njambini. Uh, Wednesday, we have a service here. A Friday, it's online service. And I see Pastor Tom, maybe he wants to say something. Uh, God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Kimakwa. Mine is very brief. I didn't want to forget um, that Mildred was part of, um, that being a head teacher of a private school, they were part of Kasarani cluster of head teachers. And I think um, they have been informed. They're very, very sympathetic. And uh, we, they have sent condolences, which are going to pass to you, the family. And uh, they just want you to know that they're standing with you and that they are praying for you, and they are together in spirit. We have one of them, I think he's called Jackson Onyere. I don't know if Jackson is here. He was here, I think, at some point. Uh, but we just want to thank them also for being part of this um, arrangements and standing with the family. So God bless you. I just thought I should say that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor Tom. So. We can uh, leave because we have already said the grace. Uh, give us a song as the, we, we proceed. Is it we proceed?
Yeah.